Good. Hi, everyone. I, I'm, I'm Gene. I'm the founder of uh, Better Me. Um, maybe if I can maybe just have a, a quick introduction of everyone, maybe a, a quick one minute, just so that I know who, who I'm speaking to today. <laughs> Thomas, maybe you can start. I'll do that. Yes. Thank you. So my name is Thomas. I live between Berlin and Costa Rica. Um, and I work on, the, um, on, on three buckets that are interlinked, steering, adaptation, everything that um, works towards making the planet a good place, full circle, trying to figure out what a good place is, and um, deep alignment, preparing ourselves to be stable enough to navigate all of this uncertainty. Over to, over to Olivia. Hi, I'm Olivia. Um, so I work in, I'm in Hong Kong and I work for a conglomerate, the SWI group, but I actually look after diversity and inclusion. So the idea is, is trying to build a, um, build greater inclusion within the community. So then from any, everything that we do as an organization from recruiting to retaining, uh, and then to how we actually, um, how do we actually integrate ourselves into the community that hopefully we, we can build a, a more inclusive um, community and culture where uh, we respect and embrace people's difference. So that's kind of what I do every day, which is, I think is a dream job. <laughs> Very cool. All right, uh, name somebody that you want them to introduce themselves in this. Uh, well, I already know Jean really well, so I'm not gonna ask Jean. Um, I guess Yusuf? <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, from Maldives and I'm um, currently working on an AI startup project and it's very hard to, <laughs> when we have an, uh, I, I don't know much to talk about myself. <laughs> Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, who would you like to go, who do we like to introduce themselves next? Maybe, uh, maybe Paul. Okay. Uh, or uh, is it, if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, please uh, forgive me. Is it uh, Ural, Ulri? The young gentleman with the, with the flannel shirt. Yes. If you can uh, introduce yourself. Mm, we're not getting a lot of uh, volume. We're not, we, we can't hear you, but it's okay. Uh, what about Amber? No? Hi there, I just logged in. Um, I'm Amber, I live in Paris. Uh, nice to meet everyone. Thank you, Amber. But hi. No problem. Well, Amber, what, what do you do? Can you give us a, a brief bio? Um, sure, I used to work in the crypto space, so I'm just, um, looking for something something new and interesting. Okay, great. Sorry, that was my dog, Asmanji. And, uh, and Alex? Hi, yeah. Um, my name's Alex. I'm from London. Um, I work as a naturopath. Um, and I'm in the process of setting up two... Uh, herbal based businesses to bring back herbal tradition and medicinal properties to people's lives in the UK. Very cool. Thank you. And uh, Rami? Um, <coughs> hi. Oh, I've got a sticker on there. Hello. Hello. I'm from London. I work part time as a doctor, as a psychiatrist, and the other half of the week I work for a design studio. Thank you so much, Rami. Okay, I think uh, we, we've covered most people here. And, uh, oh, and we have Nancy. Nancy, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. It's Nancy from Hong Kong. I'm a flight attendant with a broken wing now under the pandemic. So come across with this event to travel the world still virtually. Even now, we can't fly. Yeah and get some inspiration from everyone. Thank you. 
And uh, Suvi, who just joined us, can you make a quick introduction of yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Suvi. I'm actually, I represent the a public decentralized uh, blockchain. It's called Telos. And um, we are, uh, I represent the Telos Foundation, which is a promotional marketing body. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, uh, Jean, I'm sorry, I, I, I joined a bit late. But if you can just give me a, a quick uh, introduction. Sure. Um, we have sort of the same name. So I, uh, I was the speaker before, but your session looks, looks very interesting, so I stayed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm based in Hong Kong. Um, I was the uh, former CEO and CMO of Hanson Robotics. Um, so I worked on Sophia the robot for, for many years. And I've left the company to create my nonprofit to look into creating a wisdom um, AI that could help us become more enlightened. That's wonderful. Wow. We have a group of really strong and, and, and amazing entrepreneurs in this room. Uh, well, then I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, I think that's one person is joined. Uh, Graham. Graham. Yeah, Graham. Can you just give me a, a quick bio of, of yourself? I love the background. <laughs> Thank you. So quick bio of myself. Um, deep into regenerative companies using teal ways of structuring the organization from how human beings interact all the way through to how we incorporate once upon a time a theoretical physicist and used to work for Procter and Gamble up to 12 years ago is that enough very cool know. very cool okay thank you everyone so I'll, I'll quickly start uh, so my name is Eugene uh, I can go by Gene like Gene Hackman and uh, I'm from Hong Kong and I was a, a, I was a banker for many years of my life, uh, up until 2012. And I start to dive into, to, uh, augmented reality. Uh, and that was in Korea and subsequently went further and looked at, you know, virtual reality. And now we have mixed reality and all sorts of things. So my, there was always a, 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 a real passion for technology and things are fun, right? I mean, I'm all about having fun. And then I was basically, because I, I was kind of on the tech side, on the banking side, I was then roped in, into FinTech in Asia. And, uh, and I, I was, you know, I, I was part of some Swiss banks that were launching FinTech platforms in Asia. And I was in Singapore in 2014. Uh, launching a, a, a exchange, if you will, that would connect you know, the buyers and the sellers, so the, the, the manufacturers of, of products to retail consumers. And thereafter, I, it was a short time, but I learned quite a bit, and I was very grateful about it. And in 2014, I made my way back to Hong Kong, and I, I, was, I was building an, an asset manager. And at that time, we worked uh, with we had a ch we had a chance to work with SoftBank uh, from Japan, SoftBank Securities, and I wanted to take the idea that I learned in Singapore and bring it to to the Japanese, which is to create a a supermarket of of financial products online. So you know, going through all these all these kind of uh, experiences. I realized, wow, there's a lot that I'm learning here. Technology is not as, always great as we think it is, uh, although we would like it to be. And there was a lot of real, I guess, real life experiences to how people view technology, why people like it, why people didn't like it. But what was interesting about my life and why, why is it that I'm here today, right? It has absolutely nothing to do with technology. It has nothing to do with banking. It has nothing to do with anything. What it has to do with, it has to do with a lot of love and compassion. So in 2014, uh, I was in New York, and I was in New York because I was I was with my my friend, and we were searching for a business to to bring back to Asia. And we thought health and wellness was, was a up and coming business, and we thought, wow, you know, wouldn't it be great if, if we can bring something really cool from New York, you know, back to Hong Kong? They always say, right, we can make it in New York, we can make it anywhere, and it was a stroke of luck. I was walking around Soho. And I really needed to go to the toilet. <laughs> In the corner of my eye, I saw this little sign that said Golden Bridge. So I said, okay, 
I told my friend, like, can you just go in and just talk to, talk to the, the you know, the shop owner? I, I really need to use a toilet. So I go in and I'm using a toilet. And sure enough, the Golden Bridge was a Kundalini center, a yoga slash Kundalini center. Now I'm gonna roll it back a bit for everyone. Why this is interesting is because I was doing a lot of, I was doing a lot of yoga. I was doing a lot of yoga in Hong Kong. Uh, and, and I was doing, I was practicing this, singing this one specific yoga called Dharma yoga. And for those of you who don't know Dharma yoga, it started by a guy named Sri Dharma Mitra, who's one of the oldest living yogis on the planet. He's 81 now. So, you know, I was in New York. I didn't, I didn't, I was, I, and, and I, I asked this gentleman who was standing there right in front of me. He's around six foot seven. And, and he's an African-American gentleman who had a white turban on and a white, you know, and a white, um, you know, those a, a white robe on. But in the robe, on the side, so it's like slit open, right? You could see that he was wearing a, a, a tie-dye t-shirt and a pair of cut-off jeans and a pair of Dr. Martens. And I, I was curious, so I said, hi, you know, my name is Gene you know, hi, how are you doing? And, and, you know, we became friends and we started talking. And he said, listen, I used to be a model in Paris. You know, I was about that life. There was a lot of champagne, there was a lot of drugs in my life. I was in, on, on the cover of, of uh, Vanity Fair and, you know, these amazing fashion magazines. And he said, I found yoga. I found Kundalini. And it settled me. It calmed me down. And that's why I have this white robe over me with a white turban. But obviously, uh, he's still who he is, like, behind the white turban. He was wearing these cut-off jeans and, and a tie-dye shirt. And, and we became pretty good friends. And, and I asked him, I said, you know what? I'm here for, I only have three days remaining in New York City. I'm looking for a good business to bring back to Asia. You know, what's the top three yoga studios I have to go to? And he looked at me, and he looked a bit shocked because he's like, you didn't know Dharma here is here? You didn't know about the Dharma yoga studio? And, and I had no idea because I just always thought that this gentleman this, that I was practicing with, that he was, he, was either, he was either, you know, from years ago had passed away or he was somewhere, living somewhere in India. And he turned out, turns out he lives in New York City. So he's like, you know, you have to go meet Dharma in Midtown. And I said, absolutely, because I'm, I've been practicing Dharma yoga all this time in Hong Kong and I've never met him. So I went. And uh, I always remember the first time meeting him. I, I went to this little uh, ashram. It looks like an ashram, right? It is very, it's very authentic. And there's this little gentleman walking in, really shy, around five foot, you know, five foot three, maybe. And you just didn't expect that you would meet one of the oldest living guru in the middle of New York City, right? In the middle of Midtown, uh, next to Flatiron. And I walked in and he, you know, he was very humble and I greeted him and we started doing yoga. And so I did yoga with him. And, and I was, I always remember for those of you who, who've done yoga before, I was in a side twist. He walked over and he just put his hands on me and he twisted me further into, into my, my, uh, my pose. And I thought, I didn't think of anything, but I left that day after an hour and after leaving, I looked at my friend and I said, there's something there. I don't know what it is, but there's something there. So we went back in the remaining two days that we had, you know, spending an hour with him every time, just doing yoga and left and went back to Hong Kong. And the moment I landed in Hong Kong, my life started to change. I, I didn't know what it was, but I felt a lot of love and compassion. I just, it was just like, overfilling in my heart and 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 everything that i thought i knew as a banker as, as a as a as a tech guy start to unravel and i realized that there was something else within me that was spilling out from my heart and sure enough it was love and compassion because that's what dharma is known for and i didn't know right I, i'm you know how they say like when you're ready you'll find your teacher well i i wasn't really looking for a teacher but i found him and because of him, well, in six years now, six years later, it basically 
took me on to a completely new path uh, to where I am now. And my story is that I, I came back to Hong Kong and I was still, uh, you know, I was still a partner at a management firm and we were managing money. And I just, there was something that was grown in me that I couldn't put a finger on, but I knew there was a lot of uh, love and compassion. So I, I, I remember I was just sitting on the couch and really I founded this company by sitting on the couch, not doing anything. I was just watching the news and the news was just filled with bad, really bad press. You know, there was a lot of gun violence. I remember in, in 2015, especially uh, in America. And I was just watching the news and I said, well, why can't I do something about it? Like, why do I have to sit here and take all these bad news all the time? And so I, I quickly thought of an idea and I thought, well, if I can go through a change, right, anyone can. And I promise you, anyone can if I can go through a change. And to push it further, I had a chance to, to speak to uh, one of Dharma's key student. His name is Andre Ram. For those of you who, 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 who's in the yoga scene, you might know this guy named from Colombia, Andre Ram, who, who, who is a, a fairly wise person. I, I know uh, Janine was talking about, you know, what is the definition of wise? And, and he was a fairly wise person, which I had a conversation with. And the two things that we talked about was purification and self-realization. Now, I want everyone to take a minute to think about what is purification to you and then what's self-realization to you. Just take a minute and have a thought and then I'll come back to you. Okay, I'm coming back now. So the reason why I spoke about purification and, and self-realization was, you know, in, in yoga, we talk about this term all the time. You know, we got to be purified. We got to do purification. And then the second thing is that we got to be self-realization. And, and, I, and I, I said to Andre, I looked at Andre right in the eye and said, you know, we talk about purification and self-realization all the time. What does it all mean? Right? What does all this mean? Right, because there's, there's just a, a lot of, you know, the universe and, and what have you. And, and back then, you have to remember, I was still in banking. So I, I didn't, a lot of things, a lot of this was new to me. And, and we talked about it. And he said, listen, purification. Purification doesn't mean that you're, you know, you've been purified or you're a good person, you know, overnight. That you're doing everything, you know, you're, you're listening to the Ten Commandments and you're following exactly what they tell you. Right. What purification meant was that it meant that you have to remove your blockages. Now, what are blockages? Blockages are basically things that are holding you back from accepting what's coming towards you. All right? So, very basic things. Uh, if, in, in, if you're an entrepreneur, you know about this. As an entrepreneur, you want to hear more yeses than noes. Right, whether you're fundraising, you're starting a new company, you have an idea, you want everyone around you to say, yes, that's the next best thing to slice bread. I love your idea. Yes, 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 constant yes. And I'll tell you, when I was a banker, it, the, the key thing that we focused on is no, because it was all about exclusivity. It was about only the best could join this club because you, know, you could value everything. So I came from a background where no was the right answer rather than yes. And when I had a conversation with Andre, he talked about purification, about removing blockages and saying yes, I realized that there's something interesting there because if you look at your life, every door you open will somehow lead you to another door. Now, I'm not saying that every door is perfect. I'm not saying every door you open is gonna be great, that there's rainbows at the end of it. But every door you open does lead you to another door. And whatever that door may lead you to is exactly where you are right now in the present moment. Okay. So purification meant that we were removing blockages within ourselves so that we're more open to be receiving all the goodness that we're receiving. Whatever it is that you believe in, it could be the universe, 
It could be God. It could be a religion. It could be anything. Okay. Somebody has their, if, if everyone, yeah, just put it on mute. Thank you. So that's the thing, right? Are you open to be receiving all the good things that are coming to you? That's the first thing you have to ask yourself. Right? Are you open enough that if a stranger came up to you today and, and said, listen, I want to help. Are you going to believe this person? Are you going to receive the help that this person wants to give you? Right? Most of us will probably say, no, I don't know that person. There's no due diligence. All I know is that this, this person probably wants something negative from me. So that's the first thing, removing uh, all the blockages within you through practice, purifying yourself so that you are ready to receive all the things that are coming at you, especially the good things. Right. The second conversation we had was self-realization. So I asked, you know, what, what is self-realization? You know, I mean, the word sounds very similar, very, very simple, right? I'm realizing myself. Uh, but we had a deeper conversation. We, we talked about, you know, people like, like, you know, Steve Jobs. We talked about Gandhi. We talked about, you know, all these great leaders that, that we've seen in, in our lifetime. And one thing that they all showed us, right, whether good or bad, they all showed us one thing. Have a thought about that. What did they show us? What did Gandhi, what did Steve Jobs, what did, what did uh, Martin Luther King, what did all these great people from history showed us? They showed us that it's possible. They showed us that they are normal human beings and they can create a world that has changed millions of lives. So the key thing here is basically, through observing these people who are changing our lives every day, good or bad, what they're doing is that they're demonstrating to us that if they can't do it, so can you. The question is, do you know yourself well enough? And do you believe in yourself that you can be the change? So self-realization, you know, to, to go forward with it, it, it is to understand yourself, right? It is to really truly understand who you are, what you want, what is right for you, and what isn't. I'll give you a very simple example. Self-realization, you know, for those of you who are, who might be in a, in a bad relationship right now, or maybe you're single, right? Or you've been in a series of, of, of difficult relationships. One of the key thing I, I always say is, does your mind speak to your heart? Do, do you, are you self-realized in your heart versus your mind? Because I'm gonna ask everyone a question and have a thought about it. If you, if you look at your partner, right? Whether it's your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, what have you. When you fir had first met them, what were you thinking? Were you checking boxes, boxes and said, well, this person has a certain look to them. This person doing something. That person has a, you know, he's got you know, a certain height to them, certain race to them, that they have a certain job to them. That is very common in, in our culture to basically quickly scan a person and say, okay, well, this person is X because this person fits all the, all the boxes. Now, how many of you have met that person that checked all the boxes and still, and still broke up with them? Okay. So that, that's the first thing. Now, the second thing you have to ask yourself, have you ever asked yourself, your heart, I'm not asking about your brain, have you ever asked your heart what your heart wants? Does your heart want somebody who's egotistical, that, you know, that, 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 um, that talks down on you, but you admire that person? Or does your heart tell you, hey, I want somebody who's loving and caring, that that person is always there for me, taking care of me, 
puts me, you know, at the forefront. And 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 really, really, you know, just care give gives me the feeling that this person really cares about me. All right. So what I'm trying to tell everyone right here is that your mind will think of one thing, but your heart will think of another. Because if you ask your heart whether your heart wants exactly what your brain wants, most likely your heart will say no. Now your heart, you know, w without all the judgment, or the visualization of, of, of that person that you want to be with, or it could be that person that you want to work for, your heart has an has a idea of itself. And your heart says, listen, I want somebody who's caring, who's loving. Okay. So going back to self-realization, that was part of the process of self-realization is to realize who you are and really ask the questions and, and look in the mirror and really understand yourself and to quiet yourself, quiet all the noises around you, all the influences about what people tell you should be, uh, the lifestyle that you should be in, the amount of money that you should be making, the person that, that you know, that the world sees you as, right, to remove all that. And to really realize who you are and listen to what is good for you and what is right for you, not what is rational, right? Not, we're not talking about what's rational, but what is right for you. So basically through that conversation with, with Andre about self-realization and, and purification, it set me off on my path, right? I, will, I reflected for a bit of time and I, I looked myself in the eyes, in the mirror, and, and I started listening more to my heart than my mind. Because when I was a banker, you know, for those of you who just joined, I was in banking for 20 years. And for the 20 years that I was in banking, you never use your heart. You only use your mind because everything had a value to it. Everything had a number to it that you can calculate. And that was a value that we would put on things and people in order to value. So it was very easy, it was very black and white. But once I started on this journey and I, and I put that away, I put the mind away on the side and I started thinking about my heart, a bit more of my heart, I realized that there was something that was much more powerful. And it was love and compassion. So going back to what I was telling you about starting this company, Better Me. The slogan of Better Me is a better version of me for you. And the reason why I said that is because if you truly love the people around you, you want to be the best version. You want to be the best version of yourself to them. And by being the best version of yourself, that's how you're going to inflict change in the world as being a leader, as being a sample, as being a person that basically influences people around you to become better. So that's what my, people call it a company, but I just call it movement. My movement is called Better Me, and that is the reason why I call it a better me, a better version of me for you. And that's why everyone is in this room today. So what do I do? Well, very simple. I build communities. Right? I, I want to, I'm building this for, I literally am building this for, for a, a much bigger purpose because I want to give it to the rest of the world. This is not mine. I only start something, I only start with an idea. And I want to take this idea and give it to the rest of the world. I want people to, to, to see and feel what I've started, which is Better Me. And what Better Me does is that we host events. Right? If those of you that were here at the beginning, I, do, I always do things that are fun, but I, I host events and try to create awareness about issues, around issues around the world. But that has to be fun. So a few things that we had donated to, we donated to the Australian bushfire. We created awareness around global warming. Uh, we created awareness around homeless females in Asia. 
and we donate to them. And also with the COVID-19, we donate masks. So that's what I do, right? But I do in a fun way. So I collaborate with health and wellness teachers, you know, naturally because I, I like yoga myself, uh, with musicians, with artists, uh, with techies, and with, you know, all sorts, and photographers. So everything I curate, I basically have a mission to it, wherever mission it may be, but I make it fun. So the idea is instead of going to a, a charity and you have a nice dinner around people you don't know, and you buy something that you don't want, and you watch a video that you have no idea what you're donating to, I try and make it an experience for people. So that's how I started. And it grew, and it grew with time. And, and I knew that you know something more I had to do, which was my, my burning desire is to bring the best teachers globally, bring them all onto one platform and share their knowledge with everyone in the world. Because I grew up seeing people in my family member who had, who had depression, who had uh, bipolar. And I always ask myself, if I could do it differently, if I was young and I knew that these people had around me, what could I have done different? So the idea of better me when I started, I knew at the very beginning is that I want to gather all, all the teachers around the world, healers, teachers, wherever we name them, and group them together and bring them online and become the go-to go -to place for people to learn self-help, right? If, I don't know if, if any of you, and, I, and I'm, I'm guessing most of you might have at one point in time would have thought that you might have depression or might have bipolar or might have certain issues with yourself, like myself, and ask, well, where do I start with help? Right? Do I go to a doctor? Do I tell my best friend? Do I tell my family? It's all very intimidating. So as I was building Better Me, I knew that the online component was very, very important. And I took everything I learned in banking and technology and FinTech and in augmented reality, and I pushed it forward uh, by bringing everyone online. And when the COVID-19 had started, I, you know, I was working with a good friend from Brooklyn and he, had this, he has this online streaming website, you know, basically Zoom based, it's like this right now, that teaches health and wellness. And I, I quickly said, listen, there's something that we need to do right away because the COVID-19 is about to hit and we have to bring everything online, All right? And this has to continue. And sure enough, we, we did it very, very quickly because the platform was there already, the community was there already. So it was very easy to, to bring, to cancel all my events offline and just to bring everything online. And through this experience, what I realized is that I connected with even more people. You know, there are, now I'm working with people from Cairo, from Colombia, from Ibiza, uh, from obviously America, around Europe, around Asia, coming together for this same cause. And secondly, what, I, what, what we did is that we created jobs, right? We created a, a, a very basic website for teachers to teach online. We became kind of like, for lack of a better word, I mean, we're not big, don't get me wrong, but we were trying to become the Uber of health and wellness, right? You could go on and name your own price, name your own time, and bring your students on and teach. And that was the continuation. That was a continuation when the COVID-19 hit, hit us really hard in, in Asia. And because of this, it further expanded our, our, our reach into different parts of the countries. And now every time we host an event, we have at least three countries, three different countries that are in three different time zones that are in our events, right, with the teachers. And now we're co-hosting, I, I co-host with a teacher that, that works in Cairo, uh, doing you know, sound meditation, aesthetic dance, and what have you. But all in the name of health and wellness and to help people. So what I run today as Bear Me is that we're not an NGO, right? We are for profit. And we are for profit because we, my, one of my burning desires is to help these teachers around the world to continue their lifestyle so they can help other people. 
Now, going back to when I started, I told everyone that as I start this platform, I, I knew that I had to go much wider, much bigger. So we've had many conversations around with people who are in technology, who are in artificial intelligence. AI was a big thing that we talked about. How can we use AI for health and wellness? And we talked to uh, a few different companies about that. Uh, the other thing was also how can we, can we blockchain? Can we blockchain the system? You know, Mike Healy was one person that I had spoken to about can we bring the blockchain component into what we're doing? So we're constantly having conversation around technology about how can we go further? How can we reach more people? How can we reach communities who might not care about what we talk about, but through what we do, it might influence them and it might give them new ideas. So that at the present moment, what we are is that we are a community of basically health and wellness teachers. And through technology, we've been expanding our reach uh, a bit further, if you will, uh, into, into other countries. And this is my journey. This is our, well, I wouldn't say it's just my journey. It's everyone's journey where we're continuing to broaden our reach. And we, we do have partnerships now in Taiwan, in China, in New York, uh, in Spain, and, and the latest one that we're, we're trying to expand to is Singapore. And we realize there's a lot of people who are very interested in health and wellness and who wants to, who wants to experience it. But a lot of them are still afraid. Right? A lot of them are still afraid that what is meditation? What is a gong bath? What is the sound meditation? Well, what does this actually do for me? What, what, what does, you know, becoming purified, what does that mean for me? So this is our journey right now in terms of trying to reach more people, setting up in a way where it's easier for people to accept and for people to understand, right? And to get the benefits off of what we've been doing. So this is what I do. This is Better Me. And Better Me is constantly reaching out to teachers. I, I see Thomas is here. Thomas is, is also a good friend. And he's a sound, and you guys should talk to Thomas. He's a, he's a sound meditator, an amazing one, who also lives in Hong Kong. And we're constantly out there reaching to, to partner with more people to do more, to take wherever it is that, that, that was just an idea and to grow it into different facets, uh, whether it's in the corporate world or is in the, or in the, uh, you know, the B2C, if you will, the, the consumer world. Now we've, we've worked with, another part that, that we work with is we work with small, medium enterprise. 